Hello guys, and in this video, we're going to be using PixInsight to apply a Hubble type palette to a one-shot color camera. So generally, for the Hubble type palette, you would be shooting with narrowband filters on a monochrome camera, capturing separate um, hydrogen alpha, O2, sulfur channels, and luminance channel, and then combining those into their relevant RGB channels after. However, for those of us who are shooting with one-shot color cameras, as I am, um, this is one way that you can kind of achieve that Hubble palette look to your one shot color images. And we're going to be using some um, scripts here that I found online from um, a guy called Bill who um, wrote these scripts and they're really amazing. They're, they're pix pixel math scripts that we can use here in um, PixInsight to get a Hubble type palette. So what we are working with here is the Rosette Nebulae. So we'll apply a screen transfer function stretch to this, and then we will crop the image just to get rid of that bad data and stacking artifacts from around the edge. And then we're going to go ahead and use the RC Astro Blur Exterminator to sharpen up our stars. So these um, um, Hubble palette scripts work best on an image that's been slightly stretched already, but also has the stars um, removed. Um, so we'll get on to how we remove the stars in a moment. I'm going to run the RC Astro Noise Exterminator. We'll decrease the intensity of that a bit down to 55 and uh, increase the detail slightly up to 20 and then we'll run this and then finally we will use the rc astro star exterminator which will strip all of the stars out of here we're going to unscreen stars generate star image and it's going to script those out onto their own separate um, layer basically Wait a minute, before I did that, before I do that, I should run uh, another script, which is gradient expert. This will just help us with our background gradient, and then we will run the um, star exterminator. So gradient expert is um, also free. You can download it online, and then there's a script um, that kind of connects gradient expert with PixInsight. So now we've run that. Uh, now we will run the star exterminator. And then we will be pretty much ready to start our stretching. So this is, um, if you've seen any of my other videos, this is my kind of usual procedure in PixInsight. Okay, so we'll minimize the um, stars. We don't need those for now. Put that out of the way. And we will turn off our screen transfer stretch there. And I'm going to open up generalized hyperbolic stretch, open up a preview, and we will go into linear mode. The first thing I'm going to do is get our black point set. So we drag this across until we see our low clip value here begin to change. Now we don't want any clipping at all, so we'll back it off and we apply that. We reset everything. Now we're going to do a generalized hyperbolic stretch. And we want to set our symmetry point somewhere around the middle here of this gray RGB convergence. So this is where all of our, the gray area is where all of the RGB is overlapping. Um, send to symmetry point, and then we drag this out until we bring out that detail there in the nebulae. Okay, that's about as far as I want to go. And then we will decrease local intensity slightly All right, I'm going to apply that. Okay, now we'll close our preview and we close our generalized hyperbolic stretch. Um, actually, I may want to run it again. Let's just have a preview. I'll send the symmetry point a little bit over to the right this time. Yeah, just brighten up that center just a tad. Okay. 
All right, so now we have our image ready to apply a Hubble palette. You can see right now it's very kind of red and orange and it's a nice picture, but um, it could be better. So if we want to apply the Hubble palette, we're going to go over to our scripts here and I'm going to start with HOO normalization V4 and we'll just drag and drop it onto the image. It will run its magic and give us this, which is, um, okay, it's not looking great but it's the start, okay? So the Hubble palette color has now been applied to this, but it's looking quite flat and quite bland. So what we're going to do first of all is go over to our processes and we will open up a curved transformation. And we're going to start with the saturation. Let's open up a preview. And we're gonna drag out this here just to increase the saturation of this image. Okay, so that's beginning to make the colors pop a little bit more than what they were before. Still not great though, okay. So now I'm gonna go over to my R channel. I'm gonna to begin to manipulate that. So we can choose how red we want this image to be. Now this is where personal taste begins to come in and your own kind of idea of art, basically, um, and how you you personally want your image to look, you know. Um, you can see three or four pictures of the same nebulae from different astrophotographers, and they all have a completely different kind of look and feel to them, and that really comes down to how you edit. So some like to, you know, add some green, some like to pull that green back. I personally don't like too much green but I also don't like it to be, you know, too red either. So I'm going to pull back a little bit on that green, the lower end there, but I do want to pop it up a little bit there in the middle. So this is where you can begin to play around. And you can spend hours playing around with curves, just getting different color palettes and getting the image to look just as you want. Um, so now we'll play around with the blue channel. So I want a little bit more blue there in the middle at the lower end I'm going to decrease that blue intensity slightly okay so and we're starting to get this Hubble palette look to our image okay once we're happy with how it looks like I said you can play around for quite some time here in PixInsight um, playing around with this you go ahead and apply okay <clears throat> so now we have this image. Uh, now, you may wish to stay in PixInsight if you want, um, but I'm going to switch over to Photoshop. Um, but uh, first of all, we need to save these here in PixInsight. So um, I'm going to save this layer. So I'm going to go to Save As. And uh, I'm going to make a new folder here, and this will be the Hubble... And this will be the nebula layer. And we're going to save this as a TIFF 16 bit. Okay, so we're done with that. Now we'll jump over here to our um, stars. Now I want to run a script on this, it doesn't always work. But we'll try it. Um, image solver. So this should do a plate solve of this part of the sky, I hope, and identify where it is that this um, image was taken of, which part of the sky. And that will then allow us to use another um, tool here in PixInsight, which will apply a kind of scientifically accurate color to the stars. So all these different stars are in different sequences. Um, different phases of their life and they're burning different elements. And that affects the spectrum of light that these particular stars are giving out. Now, um, that's been analyzed by scientists and astronomers and there is a database of that. And PixInsight is able to apply the kind of scientifically accurate RGB values to these stars, which is quite cool. 
So rather than having, you know, just kind of generic whitish colored stars or whatever, um, we'll actually get the proper shades of blues and reds that these various stars um, actually have in reality. So that's successfully plate solved. Now what we will run is um, this here, which is the photometric color calibration. And this should then apply the correct colors to these stars. So it takes a few moments to run. Once it's finished, we'll automatically update our star layer with the correct colors. Okay, so that was successful. And now we have an accurate color to our stars based on what they should actually be. Okay. Um, this still has a screen transfer stretch applied to it. So I want to turn that off and we'll go back over to our generalized hyperbolic stretch and stretch that to bring out the stars that we want. So the further we stretch it, the more stars we're going to get. Um, I don't want too many, but I don't want to also blow out those stars. I don't want too few either. So we'll stretch to about there. It's about good. And we'll apply that. Now we can save our star layer. So I'm going to save as stars. TIFF file, 16 bit. Now that's done, I'm going to go over into Photoshop. And here in Photoshop, we go to scripts and load files into stack. This is the rosette nebulae, our Hubble palette, and we open those. So this will load those into two separate layers. I'm then going to put them into their own group, which will be the stars group. And we change the screen blending mode to um, screen. There we go. And then we create another group here, which we'll call nebulae. We'll put that into there. Okay, so you can already see it's looking pretty nice. That's, you know, for a one shot color camera, we've got a relatively nice looking um, kind of Hubble palette here. But I want to um, kind of tidy this up a little bit. So we are going to go to adjustments. I'm going to add a, um, a levels adjustment to start with. Go to our red channel, pull that in a little bit. The green, pull it in a little bit, and the blue. Okay, and then we will add a curves adjustment layer. Go to our red channel. You can then play around with how much of the red you want to bring out. So very similar to what we were doing earlier in PixInsight, but I actually prefer working in Photoshop in many ways, I guess, because, you know, I'm just a little bit more familiar with it, possibly. Um, so people like to work with what they're familiar with. And there we go. And now, um, okay, I want to tidy up these um, here, which is, it should have been removed actually by our um, calibration files, um, which I did shoot, so I'm not really sure why, but this is called Amp Glow. It's coming from the CCD. Um, but we can we can clean that up in here. So we'll go uh, down and select this layer here, and um, I'm going to grab our healing brush tool. If we just draw over this, we'll see if that helps to remove it. There you go. So you can see it's starting to get rid of these very obvious streaks of light that we have coming out from the amp glow from the CCD. Um, so this is coming from the actual camera. And uh, as I say, your calibration 
um, images should really remove this. I'm not really sure why it hasn't. Um, it generally does. Okay, so I've removed it, but it's still still kind of there. You can still kind of see it in places. So I'm going to get our clone stamp tool. And just go over this. And it just helps to break it up. Okay, so you can see that's tidied up now, that amp blow that we had there in that upper right corner. And we'll turn our star layer back on. So on the star layer, we still have something. So we'll turn off the nebulae layer. We'll go over to the star layer here. And this, we will select our healing tool, healing brush. And we'll just draw across that. And it should, Magic of Photoshop, help get rid of it. Excellent. Okay, so um, that's basically it. There is our Hubble palette from a one-shot color camera. And uh, I think you'll agree that that looks pretty nice. I mean, there is more work that could be done to it, of course, but this is a pretty nice output considering this was captured from one-shot color camera. And I, I guess in, well, we've been going, what, like 17 minutes? So, you know, within 17 minutes, we've been able to go from a one-shot color camera unstretched image through to something that looks like this which is pretty nice and uh, has not taken us too long at all so um, the link to the um, scripts is in the description of the video below and uh, if you found this useful please hit a likes and the subscribe button and follow me along on my astrophotography journey until next time i wish you all clear skies